Hello everybody and welcome to this video about the Battle of Resnod. In this video we will be examining the Rebels faction. I'll be going over all the units and then you should have an idea of what you should recruit in a multiplayer game. The first unit that we will look at is the Elvish Fighter. The Elvish Fighter costs 14 gold, has 33 hit points by default and does 20 damage on its melee attack and 12 damage on its ranged attack. All elves share roughly the same resistances, that means that they have minus 10 uh, arcane resistance, the other resistances are default. All the elves also share the elvish movement type, which means that they will only spend one movement cost in a forest. And while most units will have 50% defense in a forest, the elves will have 60% or more. The next unit that we will look at is the Elvish Archer. The Elvish Archer costs 17 gold and is thus much more expensive than the Elvish Fighter. It also has 4 less hit points. It only has 29 instead of 33. However, it has 70% defes defense in forest and it does have a very strong ranged attack. It does 20 damage by default. The next unit is a Merman Hunter, it costs 15 gold. It has 3 less base hit points than the Elvish Fighter. It does not have the Elvish Resistance, instead it has 20% gold resistance. And it also does not have the Elvish Movement Type, instead it has uh, it only costs 1 point in deep water and in shallow water to move for this unit and it also has a higher defense, 60% defense in water, whereas most other units only have 20% uh, in the water. This makes the Merman Hunter uh, the aquatic unit for the rebels. The next unit at 15 gold also is the Elvish Shaman. The Elvish Shaman has slightly less hit points but it also has a very weak melee attack and a very weak ranged attack. What makes the Shaman special is the ability to slow other targets. Target. If this attack hits, then the target will be slowed. It will only do half damage until it ends a turn. It will also half all the move moves that it can do. So slow slowing a unit down is very po powerful, especially if you want to avoid retaliation or if you want to make sure that the unit cannot do much damage on its turn. The healing ability will heal all the units around the shaman for 4 hit points at the beginning of the turn or it will uh, prevent the poison from happening. So instead of losing 8 hit points, the unit will simply not lose any hit points. However, it will not cure the poison. The next unit that we will look at at 20 gold is the human mage. The human mage has a very strong magical ranged attack and it's also the only unit for the rebels that has a magical attack at level 1. However 20 gold is very expensive for this unit, it also has very low hit points. The default hit points of the mage is 24. Compared to an uh, elvish archer that has 33 hit points, that is 9 more hit points. So 20 gold compared to 14 gold makes this a very expensive unit. The next unit that we will examine is the Woes. The Woes, just like the Elves, only spends one movement point when it moves into a forest. The Woes has a generally very low defense. Only 20, 30 or in rare occasions in a forest 40% defense. While the unit has very low defense, it has very high hit points to compensate for it, as well as the regeneration ability that allows it to heal 8 hit points at the beginning of a turn. So it has 19 more hit points than an Elvish Fighter. The ambush ability allows it to remain hidden while in a forest. The horse also has a devastating melee attack. At its favorite time of day, it will do up to 32 damage. 
during uh, neutral time it will only do 26 damage. Now keep in mind that the Wolves is a log based unit. You might hit once, you might hit twice or you might not hit at all. So for example, if you attack a unit on 50% defense, that means you have 50% chance to hit, then the chances are only 25% that you will hit twice. And there is also a 25% chance that you simply won't hit. However, if you look at how high the chances of at, at least hitting once, it's 75%. If the unit is on 40%, then you will have 85, 84% to hit it at least once. However, if the unit is on a higher defense terrain, such you only have 40% chance to hit, then you will see this number quickly drop. You will only have a 64% to hit at least once. Or if you look at this table, you will see that you have 36% chance to miss and only a 16% chance to hit twice. So always make sure that when you use the walls that you compensate for the luck. You might get very lucky or you might have bad luck. Keep that in mind. The next unit that we will be looking at is the Elvish Scout. At 18 gold, the thing that sets this unit apart is its moves. The Elvish Fighter has 5 moves, the Elvish Archer has 6 moves, but the Elvish Scout has 10. Just like other mounted units, this unit has minus 20% pierce defense uh, resistance. The Woz, its resistances, I forgot to mention, is that it has very high pierce and impact resistance, however it's neutral to blade and cold damage, but it has a very highly vulnerable to fire and arcane damage. So make sure that you shield your Woz from the right units, because for example a mage will do a lot of a mage a day will do a lot of damage to your walls. Now you sh now that uh, I showed all the units, you should have a basic idea what kind of units you should recruit. Since the scout doesn't have much melee damage, only 15 damage compared to 20 damage on the fighter, and it's more expensive at 18 gold compared to 14 gold, it means that you probably shouldn't use too many scouts, just as many as you need. So let's see what a possible recruit could look like. There is a village in the back. I think I prefer to have a fast unit that can grab that village. That means that I should use either an archer that has one more movement by default or perhaps a scout. So let's look at this map. Do I want one scout? It looks like yes. This map is big enough to support at least one scout. Maybe even more. However, since I'll be moving north anyway, I don't have to recruit too much right now. In fact, in this particular map, I could choose not to recruit more than I have to, only to grab these villages, and recruit more here. Because I can just move my leader and not spend too much gold. But just for demonstration purpose, I will recruit a full keep. So suppose you have one or two scouts. I probably want also one archer, because he's a little bit faster in this situation. Let's see if I can use Merman, maybe to grab this, this water village, but other than that, there is no real good opportunities to use him. Most other units can also use this, so I'm not going to go for Merman instead. I want to go safe with the very reliable Elvish fighters. So if this would be a different map, I would definitely recruit three, maybe even four archers. Uh, fighters, sorry. Uh, one archer, and then you could see. I like to go with another fighter. I don't like to have too many special units, since I already have two special units. I would probably go for another fighter. But depending on your opponent, you might choose to go for a mage or another archer. So I hope this gives you an idea of what you should do in your multiplayer games. Uh, in the next videos I'll be explaining some of the other factions, so maybe I'll see you there. Good luck.